Bali is one of the world's most popular holiday destinations. But has it become a victim of its own success? Tourism start to explode. More people coming in from outside than the people living in here. Decades of unhinged tourist development has come at a cost. The island of gods had become the island of trash. Now, mostly closed to the outside world, does Bali have a chance for change? A chance to reset? Bali tourism industry based on these two things, nature and culture. We cannot sacrifice them. Normal temperature. Please wear a mask. I arrive in Bali via a domestic flight from Indonesia's capital, Jakarta. For almost a year, the international airport has been shut. Tourism has come to a grinding halt. Please wear a mask. Walking through the international airport here, a place I've been through many times in my life is just quite surreal. It's normally bustling with international tourists coming to the island of the gods, but today, so quiet, I can hear the air conditioner. That's the only sound. Tapi kita prediksi akan bisa mencapai 7 juta di tahun 2020. So kita mempunyai prediction yang sangat bagus sekali di tahun 2000. Dan kemudian masuk bulan Maret. Setelah banyak negara lockdown pada waktu itu, finally akhirnya kita zero. Tidak ada flight ke Bali sama sekali. Over the past decade, the number of visitors to the island grew rapidly, from two to six million. Around 80% of the Balinese economy was generated by tourism. So when the Pariwisata has stopped, so kita to betul merasakan susah di Bali. Bali has been shut before. The 2002 Kuta bombings and the erratic eruptions of Volcano Agung hurt the tourism industry, but ultimately it bounced back. This time, no one knows when the pandemic will end. In the beginning, we thought this is going to be one month, two months maximum. It's now been 12 months. For Marcelo Ariafara and the lifeguards of Kuta Beach, their job has changed dramatically. 50 people. Not 50,000 as normally. 50 people. Maximum 100, including the lifeguard. The beach are dead. There's no activity. Lifeguard still come. If something happens, lifeguard have to be there. Ready? Go! The activity of the lifeguard never stop. Gas, 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 gas. gas. This beach is usually crammed with tourists, touts and hawkers. Today, Kuta and nearby Seminyak are empty. People who sell massas or merchandise in the beach, I heard they all go back home to their village. A very uh, sad situation because many friends of mine, I don't see them around. I hope they're okay, you know. I hope they're still alive. For the past year, government handouts have helped. 
but they haven't gone far enough. The Balinese are relying on each other to make sure those going without get fed. I'm giving the food to the man who need the food and some homeless people in Bali. Terima kasih, ini bu ya. I had to the shop. But I lost everything. But I'm happy to be to be giving all the free food. I'm so happy. I'm glad for that. The thing is, we need to be grateful for what we have at the moment. Thank you. Balinese people, we always pray and we believe in in the God. Thank you. Today I am selling here, and I hope tomorrow will be better. Yeah, tomorrow will be better. Thank you. Thank you. As the tourist centres of South Bali grapple with economic collapse, I want to find out how the Balinese are coping in more remote areas. I'm standing on the beach here in Sanur on the east coast of Bali, and very shortly I'll be jumping aboard one of these high-speed boats to cross the Badung Strait to Nusa Lombongan. Please prepare your boarding pass, use your face mask, take off and keep your shoes. Now last year, there were more than 20 boat companies operating off this beach, sending thousands of tourists back and forth to the island every week. But now, there are only two boats and two trips a day. For decades, this cluster of islands off the east coast of Bali remained sleepy backwaters with little tourist development. Nusa Lembonga remained for a long time a bit of a hidden secret. Over the last five years, that's sort of changed. Hotelier Troy Sinclair has spent the past 18 years here he's seen tourism explode. We're talking, you know, a massive change in, in, in volume uh, and in the numbers coming in. Here on Nusa Lombongan, the rapid growth brought jobs. Most of the locals found work in tourism. Almost everyone here has been impacted by the shutdown. No money, no money. <laughs> now that's all villas and bungalows all along the hill there, all pretty much empty. With no money coming in, staff have been let go and maintenance is on hold. Uh, this one went down the other day. Pontoons are day trip businesses. More up against these big pontoons and they then go into the island for tours to the Instagram shots. This pontoon under normal circumstances would have had guys on it every day, checking it, diving on it, looking at it and, you know, Obviously, in these conditions, they simply don't, and a small leak can, can lead to this very quickly. You know, I've been here a long time, and my staff are essentially family. Instead of, you know, letting things fall away or shutting up shop, how do we ensure that they have jobs to come back to? A short motorbike trip from Lombongan is the island of Chenigan. 
Every day, people cross this bridge to earn a living in Lombongan's tourist trade. Jembatan Lembongan Cenengan itu kan warnanya kuning memang itu terkenal dengan Yellow Bridge atau orang-orang lokal itu kenal dengan Jembatan Cinta karena di sana itu mempertemukan antara dua Cenengan dan Lembongan jadi satu. Jadi itu kayak cinta. For generations, the channel was used by local families to farm seaweed. But with the arrival of tourism, this industry died off. The farms made way for day clubs and selfie swings. The seaweed farms have returned because most on the island are now out of work. My name is Wayan. I come from Chiningan Island. From 1984, something like that, in my family, they work at a seaweed farm. At low tide, Wayan and his parents harvest seaweed. Working by day or by night, it's tough work. Seaweed itu bagus sekali untuk kesehatan. Tapi untuk mencarinya yang tidak sehat ya. Seaweed no good. <laughs> My parents doesn't want me to seaweed farm because this is very hard, very very hard. We have nothing choice, so we have to back to natural. The seaweed is dried before being sent to Java for processing. There, it's turned into beauty products, sushi, and medicinal extracts. Three again. <laughs> Wayan left the island to study tourism. That was the golden ticket for many of his generation. As mass tourism arrived here, Wayan returned in the hopes of building a better life for his young family. Tourism start to explode. More people coming in from outside than the people living in here. Before the pandemic, Wayan and his wife invested their life savings to build a bungalow for tourists. I tried to build um, my own business. Even I have to loan money from the bank. The bungalow has only seen a few guests. This pandemic still go on. So this is the, the worst things happen, especially when I have to borrow money from the bank. And then for me now, it's very hard to return this one back. When Wayan worked at a high-end resort, he earned 800 Australian dollars a month. Now, seaweed farming brings in less than 300. And his young family has grown. This is my little house, so here with my family. The younger daughter, three months, Komang. Nice to meet you. My wife. Nice to meet you too. Hap la tang. When I arrive at my home, after getting my seaweed here, my kids are smiling. Your tie is gone, so that's more important. Yeah. We still survive here, yeah, because of the seaweed. Smells <laughs> good. Dibilang pandemi ini adalah menurut kami pandemi ini adalah musibah. Jadi kita harus tahu untuk ke depan kita tidak boleh mengagung-agungkan hanya satu sektor saja. Kalau misal kembali ke normal, kita juga harus bisa mengimbangi itu antara tourism dengan uh, natural life yang ada di sini. Change is on everyone's mind. Back on the mainland, generations of Balinese are coming together to plan a different future for the island. Mafia, who, who, who.
This is a wake up call for all of us so that we realize that we cannot just depend on one uh, industry and we have to develop all the other industries that actually have great potential. Christia Damawan runs events at her family's venue, Kebon Vintage. It's become the place for many of these big conversations. I think it's a good time for reflection this year, for sure. Going back to loving our island and make sure that uh, people don't abuse our island as well. For years, locals have been unhappy with the negative impacts of mass tourism. Post pandemic ini tentu ada perubahan-perubahan perilaku baik perubahan daripada pariwisata turis itu harus memberikan manfaat kepada masyarakat Bali. Ini good time for us to again to yeah. The infrastructure problem here in Bali. It's clear to Pak Gusagung, the head of Bali's tourism board, what needs to be done. I think we need like school. 65% of Balinese people not graduate from junior high school. Not enough water, not enough electric, not enough road. Traffic and rubbish. Number one problem in Bali. Bali has already have tourism more than 100 years. All the, the money's come, but 70% go out from Bali. Because the business is not operated by Balinese people. The way thinking have to change. Bali's rubbish problem had begun to tarnish its picture-perfect reputation long before the pandemic. The island lacks a centralised waste system. There's nowhere for this to go. The island of gods had become the island of trash. That's something Bali Ray's Gary Benchgib is trying to change with his organisation Sungai Watch. What very little people realise is that you know, all of this plastics that, you know, uh, literally fills up the brink of Kutai Beach um, comes from somewhere. And it comes from the rivers. Rivers are essentially the toilets of Indonesia. Uh, they're on the backs of hotels, villas. With the slack of waste management that we have on, on the island, our rivers in Bali have turned into garbage dumps. The COVID shutdown provided an unexpected opportunity. There's a sense of we want to go somewhere, we want to do something, and so that's really where we started our weekly cleanups at the, around that same time. Progressively, you know, we went from like 20, 30, and now we're all the way up to like 150, 200 people. of COVID, people have more time. There's this community out there that wants to clean and press the reset button on Bali before we open up to international tourism. So here we are, standing waist to knee depth in the rivers, the Badung district. He's got all these workers here. They've all lost their jobs in the COVID pandemic. They used to work in tourism, etc. Now they're out here every day attacking these rivers with sickles, with chainsaws, whatever they've got. It's a war on plastic. There's a long way to go. Name is Gede, and before I've been working 
be a driver. But right now, because of the pandemic, we have no job anymore in the tourism. And now we're going to the river, to cleaning the river. Hopefully soon, the tourism coming again to Bali. And we clean already. The people in the village, the local, we join to clean the river, the beach, the land of the rice field. Thank you. I have a rice field back in my hometown and my father, he have a problem with the plastic every single day. So that's why like, I need to find a community who solve this kind of problem. Rivers crisscross the island, flowing through villages, farms and rice fields. They sustain local communities and the tourism industry. But the rivers are under pressure. Tourists per capita generate three and a half times more waste than locals. We're bringing two tonnes of trash every day in our research station to sort. We have a sorting table here to sort plastics into 15 different types of categories to bring it to recycling. Of the 300 tonnes of plastic collected so far, only a third can be recycled. These guys, unfortunately, can't be recycled. This is a one-time use, and then it has a lifetime behind it. You know, it lives longer than our grandkids. Kids, 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 kids. What we're trying to, to leverage <laughs> is the brands that are responsible for the pl plastic packaging. Sachets of instant... Through their comprehensive documentation, Sungai Watch hopes to hold the manufacturers accountable. Sungai Watch in many ways is more of a data river cleanup organization. So really giving that transparency as to what we're finding in the rivers online for everybody to see so you know, it can engage. I believe like every generation has their own revolution. Our topic now is about the environmental issue. Getty Robbie is a musician and an educator. His band Navikula are rock and roll royalty. For two decades, they've brought politics to the young people of Bali through their music. Love rock and roll so much. Because in concert, we can collect a concentration of audience in, in one place. Even the religion is transformed by shadow puppet, by theater. So what's the difference which is with the rock and roll? Today, Robbie is putting the final touches on his film entitled Palau Plastic. Translated means Plastic Island. In Indonesia alone, more than 90, 93 million plastic straw is used every day. More than 500 million plastic bags, single-use plastic bags, is used every day. Produced with local NGO Copernic, this film is a shift for Robbie from years of frontline activism. He wants this documentary to put pressure on decision makers. In Bali, the tourism industry and the waste that created by this industry also become a problem. More people come, then more waste. It's such a, like, a, it's predicted. Logical. It's very logical, right? What the important for us is uh, 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 prevention. Robbie believes that the answers to the island's problems can be found in its traditions. In Bali, there is uh, some traditional rules to make it balance between uh, economic prosperity and natural preservation. But way, long way lost. More money, more money. It's betrayed this concept. Will Bali return to the way it was after this pandemic ends? This is the big lesson for us to shifting our priority. Economic and ecology is not two separate things. We understand that we live from the nature. We cannot damage the nature. Specifically in Bali, the concept is nature and culture tourism. That's our asset. That's what we sell. We cannot shit where we eat. Right? 
A year on from the start of COVID, Bali is preparing to reopen to visitors. Tourism will return to the island of the gods and bring with it much needed money. What type of tourism do you want? We want to everybody based in Bali. Jadi tidak mau juga merusak pariwisata merusak our nature in Bali. This is the time for Bali to do. Balinese people look at themselves, yeah. So like we we learn. I think the government learns, the industry learns, and the people as well learns. Taksu is our blood. We cannot describe, yeah, because it's process. Balinese people, since they are in the mom pregnant, yeah, that's already start. It's not religion, it's uh, Bali. The Kuda lifeguards are winding down for the day. No one knows exactly when these beaches will be full again, but Marcello and his crew will be waiting. When the tourists come in, we hope they don't littering. The, the beach has been very clean. I hope you guys still come to Bali and we're here for you. You can bring um, good energy and we can give our energy for you guys. Perlu